Hey ladies and gentlemen, Stephen here from Adolescence. Welcome back to another video. Thank you so much for joining me today and I hope you guys are doing well. And today I'm joined by my good friend Carlos from the channel Brooklyn Fragrance Lover. Hello everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. And in today's episode, we're going to be discussing two fragrances by the company Atelier de Sore, and they are Riviera Drive and Riviera Lazuli. So make sure to stay tuned. Before I begin the video, I do want to mention that if you are new to this channel, if you like fragrance related content, whether it be top 10 lists, fragrance reviews, giveaways, unboxings, pretty much anything fragrance related, do consider subscribing to this channel. To support this channel, all you got to do is click that red button in the corner. And also, I'm going to be leaving Carlos's information down below where you can check him out as well. So, a few months ago, we actually met up in New York City, in Manhattan, my friend Carlos and I. And we met up with the owners of the company, Atelier de Sor. And that was right at the time when this fragrance um, was released, or I should say this collection was released. This is a Riviera collection. And I remember trying all three. Riviera Lazuli was your favorite, Carlos. And mm -hmm. Riviera's Drive is my favorite. And so I remember smelling it for the first time, just being overwhelmed in a very positive way, you know, enjoying these fragrances, admitting that it might have been a little bit out of season as these are late 2019 releases, but now we are officially in the summer of 2020. And I gotta be honest with you guys, this is a fragrance that I have worn on a number of occasions so far. And this is a fragrance that will unquestionably make my top 10 best summer niche fragrances for 2020. So I'm gonna be talking about Riviera Drive. Carlos is gonna be talking about Riviera Lazuli. And how about you start things off for us, my friend? Well, first of all, it had me meant to put this one in my top 10 niche for summer. <laughs> you know, I, I try to be careful. I, I try to plan, because I'm an airhead of sorts. It is what it is, I've, al I've always been. So I'm the one that needs that shopping list when I go to the grocery store, because there are times I've, I needed, I was cooking something and I would have to go back to the store back and forth three, four times because I forgot an ingredient that I needed and forgot it. <laughs> so here, this is the wonderful, the wonderful um, Riviera, Riviera Lazuli Gold Flakes, that is their thing. In all of their perfumes, there are gold flakes in the juice. I don't recall if I get glittery or not, so I don't, I'm not sure how that works, but uh, you can definitely see them in the bottle. For me, this is definitely a summer fragrance, as is the whole collection, the Riviera collection. You know, obviously the color of the bottle, blue. And uh, this is, it's very citrus, bergamot, lemon. It has some cypress. It has some pine, it has some incense. So it kind of uh, gives it a little more body than being an outright just aquatic. Listen, this is a, a niche fragrance, so it has to stand apart from other types of releases. It's really refreshing. It's def definitely, definitely unequivocally for the summer. Yeah. Or in the winter, when you want to remind yourself of summer times. And that's the thing too, if it's a type of fragrance that you find yourself wearing a lot in the summer, you know, when you go back, I know as a teacher, right, when I go back to work in September, occasionally I preserve some of these summer fragrances as a pick-me-up so that I can wear them in the fall and in the winter to sort of remind myself of that previous vacation that I went on. And this one, as you mentioned, you know, it has that bright citrus in the opening. I get more lemon than anything, but it also has a little bit of that fir balsam cypress green dry down in here that I really, really like. And it's a really nice contrast to some of the brighter, more effervescent notes. I think oftentimes when citrus is used in fragrances, we'll have a fragrance that relies too much or too heavily on citrus, as opposed to this fragrance where it's like, well, I'm gonna give you that bright opening. I guess something that will kind of put you in the mindset of walking along the French Riviera on a hot summer day. And it also has the greenery and the shrubs and that herbaceous quality to it as well, which I think is something really Really nice that this fragrance accomplishes and I think all of the fragrances for the most part in the collection uh, seem to do and I know you and I were talking off camera but this is a company where when they release a fragrance they have a lot of sustenance whether you're talking about uh, Bois Sicar or Rose Umayyad these are really strong really powerful fragrances so whenever I do acquire a fragrance from this company I really do feel
feel like I'm getting my money's worth. And just to echo the point that you make, uh, you actually do see a little bit of the gold flakes. So uh, just keep that in mind if you're going to be spraying it on, on your clothing or a shirt or anything like that. Yeah, some of the uh, gold flakes will actually escape the atomizer. But I've got to be honest with you, I really enjoy this fragrance. I love this fragrance when I'm thinking of something that I want to wear that is not your typical fresh, ozonic, aquatic, salty, oceanic, seaweed, kelp type of fragrance, whatever. But I want. Oh my God, yeah. <laughs> you know. And there's so much of that. And not to say there's anything wrong with that. Another fragrance that I absolutely love is Whetstone. And I know that's one that you have experience with as well. And that one is really nice, really oceanic. It feels like I'm on a cruise ship. This one, on the other hand, it feels like I'm enjoying the cruise ships or the yachts from afar as I'm walking along a boardwalk with, you know, fresh flowers in the air and it's an amazing fragrance. All in all, I think that the three fragrances are definitely tied because it feels like we almost have the same notes for each of that we did. Oh, yeah, yeah. But they're definitely all connected with slight variances within all three. But definitely, it's not it's not aquatic. Um, it it has some other things to make it more interesting than a boring aquatic. I guess I'm just echoing your words. So I agree, Stephen. <laughs> <laughs> and that's cool. Yeah, and I totally agree with you. You know, it's not aquatic in the sense of it being like K-Lone or Ambroxan heavy. Um, but it does have these other green elements that I think really ground the fragrance and add some really well-deserved uh, diversity to the composition. For sure. <laughs> that's I know, awesome. I know so a lot of people who are fans of this particular collection. I'm a, I'm a fan pretty much of this brand overall, but they have a lot of strong ones. I only dislike perhaps only one, to be honest. I love the black collection. Loon Feline is a beautiful vanilla fragrance. Uh, Larm du Desert is a, a great uh, incense fragrance. Sure. Uh, the Iris Valve is a great, beautiful, sexy Iris. Sexy is not usually a word that you equate with iris. But this yeah. one is spicy and sexy and just oh so good. A lot of great offerings. And also one more thing, the white collection, Core de Sange, I love so much. And the other two, I didn't really tr try them, but I'm sure I'd love them. <laughs> I have Core de Sange and it's a great, great fragrance. A lot of grapefruit from what I remember, it's awesome. So thank you all so much at home for tuning in. I hope you took something of value from this video. And Carlos, thank you so much for being on camera with me to share your thoughts on, thank you, on these incredible fragrances. And um, I know they're available in a couple different retailers. So I'm gonna leave some links down below and hopefully you can get yourself a sample of it first to see how it resonates with you. But I would say if there is an ideal time to get it, it's now. We're in the heart of summer. These are summer oriented fragrances. So definitely pick them up while you can. But uh, thank you all once again for tuning in. Again, if you took something of value from this video, please do consider subscribing. All you have to do is click that red button in the corner. And also Carlos's information is gonna be down below as well. So make sure to go ahead and subscribe to his channel. This way, whenever we do upload future fragrance related content, it'll get delivered straight to your feed. You never need to worry about missing any of our future uploads. Thanks again for watching. I love you all and we'll see you soon. Bye. Bye.